All right, and we're back for another episode of the Sports Department Podcast with Justin Valentovic, Stephen Clark, and Jesse Norman. And we're almost done with week one as we're recording this. Monday Night Football is going on between the Ravens and the Raiders. But the majority of week one is in the books. So we are here to recap and talk about all the games uh, that happened, all 15 of them basically from Thursday through Sunday night football. We had a bunch of good games, a bunch of stinkeroos, and a few games that were in between. And I'll just go over how we're picking games this year because like wrestling, no spoiler or spoiler warning, I'm in last already. So we'll get into all of that. So Jesse and Clark, what's going on? Uh, Not much. Um, you know, football, football, man. It, it was a great, great weekend of sports. Um, it felt very, very nice to have uh, football back. Just sat on my couch for like seven hours of commercial free football. Yeah, I was just and, in a know, comatose state. Like I, I, like, I was watching like the one o'clock games, obviously, because Colts were on and the four o'clock games. And by the time, like, it was nice. Yeah. And then I started playing like MLB in between because, you know, after the four o'clock games, you're kind of like fried a little bit. So you're just kind of like, well, not Jesse's fried, but mentally fried. So you just kind of play something else, but with it on in the background. And I was just like, oh, God, it's 8.30 already. Where is the day gone? Was like, and That's... then Carrie Underwood appears on your TV yeah, screen. Like, oh, 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 okay. I'll just say it. <laughs> so let's get into it, though. But first, let's talk about how we're picking games this week or this season. So last this week, we didn't really do it because schedules just didn't line up. I'm ripping a deck apart, and Jesse's in Michigan still. So we just couldn't line things up. 12-hour time difference, you know? <laughs> it's rough to work around that. So the way we're doing it is I'm actually going to try to keep track this year, and we'll give a prize to the winner somehow. Some way we'll figure it oh, out. Oh, guys, come on. You got to not – I'm already going to win the wrestling one. Well, Two and, the, and w- <laughs> basically what we're doing is each game is worth one point, and I'm doing a guarantee – you know, homage to Joe Namath, who, you know, don't really say his name in this household too much. And if you get your guaranteed win right, it's a five point game. And if you get it wrong, you get zero points. So just to go over week one so far, like I said before, I'm in last place with a big old zero because I got five games right. And then I guaranteed the Packers and that's negative five. So put me at zero in second place. Wait, essentially. Justin, you said yes. you said if you get the lock wrong, it's zero points. It's five points. Then you lose just five. said it's negative five. OK, if you get it right, it's plus it's a five, five. game. And then if, if you, you get, get it wrong, wrong it's OK, I I'm prefer. Flat. Yes, I like that. So I prefer that, too. Yeah. So I got five games right. Got the lock wrong, so I'm at zero. Clark <laughs> got nine games right, but also locked the Packers, so he's at four. Clark and – or Bologna and Jesse got six games right and both got their locks right of the Rams for Bologna and the Niners for Jesse, and they're both tied at 11. So hey, it'll – Hey, getting – well, like, well, how many did I get right? Six, Nine? Uh, five – four. I don't know. No, 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 no. Before what the did you just say? Hold up. You, you got... said before that he got like nine right, but then he got four, minus five. five. Yeah, that makes sense. Then four. Yeah, you got nine. Yep. Dang, Clark. It honestly, sucks to be you, man. Honestly, that I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. I'm not going to lie. I know the lock is wrong. It doesn't mean anything at you all. You would have won my parlay if you got that amount right. My eight I, game, I, that yeah, died that, after. Whoo, real that's quick. giving me a little bit of that confidence to, you know, go into the DraftKings app or fan <laughs> app and, you know. But. Like Better wrestling, I'm in the shit house already, so <laughs> probably won't win. But we'll do a running total every week, and at the end of week 17, we'll see who has the most points. Should make a little week graphic 18. or something. Yeah, yeah. Week 18. Well, 17 <laughs> after 17 games. So speaking right. of those games, let's just get Solid right on up. into it, and let's talk about one of the games of the week. You know, obviously, game of the year candidates already because it's been the only game so far. Let's talk about an AFC Championship game rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs holding off the Browns 33 to 29. And it just seems like one, the chiefs are still that good and they're not slowing down and the Browns are just going to keep running into them. And uh, until they get over the hump, they won't get past the chiefs. It seems like, and they're just going to be constantly in their way. Yeah. Um, The first half of this game was mainly all Cleveland for the most part. They led, a lot of the game, I thought Cleveland was going to win it. I, I honestly thought it was going to happen. I thought, you know, Chiefs are finally taking that one step back. I had it in the back of my head. I have the Chargers still winning the division. So I thought it was actually coming true that the Chiefs were going to take that one step back. 
that then you get to the second half, you get the long Tyree kill touchdown, you get the touchdown to Travis Kelsey, you get all that nonsense, shut out the Browns in the third quarter, only put up seven in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, they put up 23 in the second half and, and the chiefs are there as usual. It, it, it's what we all should have expected. It's what we all probably predicted. Um, but yeah, Chief, Chief, chiefs look good, man. Chiefs look good. Yeah. I mean, uh, I said you shouldn't you shouldn't be uh, thinking they're going to take a step back. Um, the Chiefs are going to be better than ever this year, probably the best that they've ever been. Honestly, um, they can take an entire half off. They literally cannot play an entire half of a game and still win. Um, the Browns, you know, I don't want to say they browned it, but they kind of kind of did. Versus any other kind team, versus any other team, they're winning this game. But obviously the mishandled punt towards the end of the game obviously is the big brown moment that you're alluding yeah. to well but also on the flip side patrick mahomes to travis kelsey or patrick mahomes to tyree kill just as unstoppable as ever and quite frankly one of the most unbeatable passing attacks ever if we're being honest because kelsey's guaranteed 10 yards and tyree kill can stretch the field 50 yards no problem yeah uh they're they're pretty dangerous. Their defense didn't look great in the first half, and then I think they looked a whole lot better in the second half. Um, that was also with guys not being able to suit up. I'm pretty sure Matthew didn't play. No. Yeah. I'm pretty he sure came he was off out. COVID, yeah. But he wasn't. He was still having some residual effects from it, so he still. Yeah. Really so he didn't do. play. I don't believe. Frank Clark Chandler Jones played. had a massive game though. Like he made his presence known. Well, he doesn't very play early. for the Chiefs or the Browns. Chandler Jones. Oh, Chandler, not Chandler Jones. Jones. Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Oh, Chris. Oh, yeah. Well, Chris Jones is a top five defensive lineman that nobody ever talks about. But that's He's what I'm saying. Fantastic. They were still missing some key pieces on their defense, and yet they still have enough to step up and make the plays when it matters. Yeah, I mean, well, I think I think this is your AFC Championship game. Um, most likely, or it's a divisional, but is probably the best game similar to last year. I think the Browns play the Chiefs the best. I think they'll continue to play the Chiefs the best. Um, you know, some other teams might be up there, might be able to kind of uh, disturb them. I think Mahomes kind of struggles when he's under pressure and the Browns don't really have a great um, pressure presence besides Miles Garrett. I don't want to hear about Jadavion Clowney. Like he's not a pass rusher. He's a run so, stopper, but also yeah, he's, on, he's a great run stop on offense. But... You know, they're still missing Odell who looked like he was going to play Warm ups didn't go as according to plan. And he was inactive. So until he comes back, could that be a deciding factor next time they play the chiefs? Cause they didn't have him in the championship game last year and they didn't have him this year. I mean, yeah, but also we need to see the Browns actually play better with Odell Beckham jr. And I don't like, Obviously, a team is not better without a more talented player. It's never been that case. It's never, oh, does talented player leave and then they're better? No, but they do seem to perform better when they don't have to worry about getting Odell his targets. Well, it makes up for it that Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb out of the backfield are one of the best running back duos in all of the NFL. Well, and that's that's the thing that I liked so much about what they did in the first half when they were just gashing the Chiefs. They were running on first and second down, setting up play action on third down. That's where Baker Mayfield is at his best. When he's ahead with the lead, they can use play action. They can just grind the ball out on the ground as much as possible. I think they kind of got away from that too much in the second half. Like, We'll talk about it too with Buffalo, but Buffalo is a different story because they don't have a rushing attack. But like the the Browns like just started like passing when they didn't need to, and it was like why like you're you're already ahead, you're playing with the lead. Don't still keep trying to like play this Chiefs ball where it's like second and one, and you're trying to do like two deep shots. You know it doesn't it doesn't really make sense. Um, but otherwise, I think Stefanski had some really nice plays that he drew up the Jarvis Landry touchdown. I thought was pretty cute. Um, yeah, the Browns defense, though, defense looked better. Honestly, the secondary secondary is going to pro I think by the end of the year, barring injuries, that secondary is going to be one of the better ones in the AFC, at least, you know, 
like I said before, they play anybody else, they're winning this game. The one thing that I take away from the Browns on this game is that they are one of the best teams in the AFC, and I feel that they are definitely going to win the North, just looking at how they played in this game. Yeah, it, it, the North is tough, though, too, at this point, because, you know, Steelers played a competitive team in the Bills and won. I mean, the Ravens aren't playing too much competition right now in the Raiders, but I think the Ravens are winning right now. I would, yeah, 14 nothing. There, yeah, there you go. It, 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 it's close. It's close. It's, it's going to come down to the end again with this. It, it really is a tough division, but um, I can definitely see the Browns coming up on top, definitely. Any last takeaways from uh, Chiefs-Browns? Two good teams. They'll, like you said, probably meet again. Um, I think the, like the Browns finally, I think can say with all certainty, they have their, uh, coach Stefanski's a really, really, really good coach. And he, he really, he gave it to, uh, Andy Reed. And if they don't fumble that pun, you know, we're probably talking about it. I think they have their coach and their quarterback, honestly, because Baker Mayfield, he did his job. He put his team in the position to win, and they just, you know. Here's here's the thing about quite, Baker. They couldn't cut the hello. They couldn't what? quite capitalize. There we go. I'm, having, I'm just having Here, a rough one today. Jesus. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Baker and the way I view Baker. Baker is like a Kirk Cousins that you can, like, actually win big games with. And actually like. But, like, he does, I think, kind of uh, get in his own head a little bit where he – I think thinks he's more athletic than he actually is because there is sometimes that Baker goes a little hero mode and you're like, Oh, you don't have the Mahomes or the Herbert arm to do that, buddy. You can't, you can't do that. But from a game manager standpoint, if he were to buy in and just run the ball on first and second down play action, third down or second down, and just hit those open targets with the accuracy that we've seen him do so far, like he's a he's a game manager that is so good at game managing and is so accurate that you could win a Super Bowl with him if the roster is right. Well, only time will tell if that roster is the right roster and if Baker Mayfield can manage the games properly for enough wins. So let's move things all the way back to Thursday night, opening night of the NFL season, where the Buccaneers were just barely able to hold off the Dallas Cowboys, winning 31 to 29. With their defense, you know, the whole almighty Buccaneers defense, getting picked apart by Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper, who seemed like was catching every single pass thrown his way. Yeah. You want to go first? Um, Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, Mr. Dak coming off the injury and, you know, proving all the haters, all the doubters wrong. Um, this game, it doesn't matter. I mean, he actually has to keep up the whole season, but this game right here, you know, everyone's saying he's not going to be the same, this, that. It's still no faith in Dak, even though he signed the big contract and all that. Um, no, D- Dak is fantastic. He's the centerpiece of this offense. Um, Ezekiel Elliott doesn't exist anymore. He is um, a little bit washed up, I'd like to say. Um, Tony Pollard, I think, should be the way to go in the running game with them. And like you said, Justin, Amari Cooper, hell of a game. C.D. Lamb, not bad of a game at all. Um, Dak was spreading the ball very, very well, and every throw was on point for the most part. It, 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 he was only 42 of 58, three touchdowns, one interception. That's that. That's Got fantastic. 400 yards. That's yeah. the one thing that was proven in this game that Dak is the elite passer. He was last year before the injury and it's back and he's just as good. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think a big case um, first off, while I do agree that Elliot is probably washed, I want to put a slight pause on that because the bucks have the best run stopper in the NFL and in Vita Bea. So do have to put a pause on that. Um, another thing, too, a reason Dak could uh, sit back there all day and pick apart the Bucks is because their pass rush wasn't getting home at all. Um, maybe this is due to the Cowboys line finally being healthy, even without Zach Martin. Uh, you know, Tyron Smith's out there, McGovern, guys who have been hurt before, probably will be hurt again, but... <laughs> Um, that, that line looked really good. They still couldn't run on the Buccaneers, but I don't think there's many teams, honestly, that are going to be able to run on the Buccaneers when your interior defensive linemen are Nadamakin Sue and 
Vitavea and you have Pierre Paul on the outside and you have Shaq Barrett, you know, Levante coming down David off too. The edge, yeah. Levante David coming down too. And Jason Pierre Paul. Yeah, I mean, no, the you're front not seven be able to... is really good and will keep and them that's, in games. But that's the thing. They couldn't get a pass rush. Not one. We named all those names and Dak was just sitting back there. He threw the ball 58 times. Um, I don't think it's a problem for the Bucs per se. Um, it is interesting, however, that they, you know, this Cowboys line was playing without a top two guard in the NFL and they looked unfazed. Uh, their center was like bottom three in PFF. He was like number 31 out of 33. They looked fine. Um, CD Lamb looked great, but you know, you gave the ball back to Brady with a minute left. What did you, you think go. was going to happen? So, yeah, so, and so. Brady had two timeouts. There was no way Dallas was going to walk away with the win. But now, especially looking at how the rest of the week shaped up for the NFC East, Dallas is definitely the clear-cut favorite now to be the to win the East. It's probably going to be a two-horse race now between them and Philly just because looking at New York, they're wow, a disaster. They're already counting out Washington. Well, Taylor Heineke is basically going to be the quarterback for a long. Frank uh, hey, Ryan he did Fitz, well in the playoff game. No, he did well, but Ryan Fitzpatrick. Dude, he played is the out. Bucks better than anybody in the NFC. No, I know, but no, actually, the whole playoffs. I mean, yeah. you know, Cardell Jones had a great run in college. Look what happened in the NFL. Okay, well, that's different. But is it? Yeah, you know, a flash in a pan for three games versus a quarterback who. You know, no one was really ready for in the champion in the wild card oh, game or division. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds like me now defending he's, Brady he's still, and stuff. He still I'm, played good. But I'm ju- I'm just saying well. though, can over a longer period of time will he hold up? That has yet to be seen. We've seen Dak be able to sustain success over the course of the entire season. That I would put more faith in Dallas now than Taylor Heineke and the Washington football team. And same thing with yeah, Jim but you're Hurts. putting but you're putting the faith. In okay, so you feel more comfortable putting faith in Philadelphia. I, mean, I, I still think they're gonna the, whoever wins this, the division is gonna have like eight nine wins, and I think yeah. Dallas can at least da, Dak alone can throw themselves into five or six games. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Philly, but I think you're valuing them way too high. All right, well, and Washington, we'll, you don't have to put stock in Taylor Heineke; you just have to put stock in the defense. defense. All right. Well, we'll, he can, we'll if, talk. If, if, if he throws two touchdowns a game and then Gibson gets one and they score 20, 21, 24 a game, they're going to win most of their games. I know, but we'll talk about more about those teams when we get there. That was just a little segue. But any last closing thoughts on the Bucks Cowboys game from opening night? Um, yeah, the Bucks side of the ball. We talked about the Cowboys that whole time. Um, Tom Brady. I mean, through two interceptions, but I mean, they gave him the ball. One back, of them was like a hail mary. That, true, that shouldn't true, count. Very true. Um, but, um, I mean, he's phenomenal game, 44 years old. So fans, he's the greatest. I've said this multiple times. Fantastic. Antonio Brown. Hello. Welcome back. I know Jesse was getting some flashbacks from the past scene. Antonio Brown put up over a hundred yards and a touchdown there. Um, I mean, Godwin was great. I think Evans was playing a little hurt, so he didn't really put up. Um, much numbers and Gronk too. He, he got the band back together. He got the old vets uh, being very productive for yeah, the team. The, the offense when clicking, this is going to be a dangerous offense again, especially if they get, I'm not saying prime Antonio Brown, but somewhere between a last year, down the Steelers that, and similar. before he went completely off the, the ledge with the Raiders. Yeah, no. Um, and like, like you alluded to earlier, Justin uh, Brady, but a minute and change left, gave him the ball two timeouts. You saw that look on the sideline, that focused depths there that he gave the, the sideline of the opposing team or whatever he was looking at, just focused or whatever. You knew it was going to happen. You knew he was going to lead that drive down the field for a game-winning field goal or whatever it was. It, it, it was fantastic. It, it was such a great game, a great opener to the season. And, you know, Brady's a goat, plain and simple for me. That he yeah. is. So let's shift gears to Jesse's team. The old Pittsburgh Steelers, they came back and they found a way to win, beating, surprisingly, the Buffalo Bills 23 to 16. Jesse, the floor is yours. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to show the Steelers here at all, um, like I never do, even though you guys somehow think I do. Um, you That's know, the Nothing But Net podcast. 
Bills probably – well, yeah, there's a difference when you have three top 15 players and your quarterback's yeah, Big Ben. Is, yep. Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference there. <laughs> uh, but, no, I mean, the Steelers found a way to win this game. They probably shouldn't have. Um, yeah, you can look at the at the pun as the main reason why the Steelers won. Uh, the Bills mishandled this game. Absolutely. They – their absolute just – I don't even want to say lack of a run game. Like their dis- utter absence in, of their, their disinterest in having a run game. It's not even like they're like, oh, well, let's try it and see. No, no, no. They don't even try. They're like, no, three downs. That's fine. Just pass. Well, it's just almost like throw. what they want to do, like what the Chiefs are doing with Mahomes, where it's like, oh, let's just air it out, air it out, throw it, throw it, throw it. And then the Chiefs are like, like, oh, Pat Mahomes that's... needs a run game to at least stay alive a little bit more and not completely throw his arm out of his socket. So it's well, like, it I makes, don't think the Bills have gotten there yet with Josh Allen. I think they should, it, and they will, hopefully it soon. It makes sense when you need to constantly be scoring because your defense is bad, but the Steelers' offense couldn't do anything on Buffalo. It was this, It looked like the same offense as last year. I will say, everybody kept saying, oh, man, that offensive line got worse. It got worse. It got worse. No, it didn't. It did not get worse. I said it. Everybody was old and washed, and they let him go. It's still not a good line, but it is better than last year. They could not pressure Ben at all. And that that goes back to Buffalo again. My main concern with them coming into the year, I said, they don't have a pass rusher on that team. Not like not one really good pass rusher. And you're competing in the AFC with Patrick Mahomes that's that's not gonna work and also Justin Herbert coming up who's the best quarterback under pressure statistically you need guys who can actually get to the quarterback and they don't have that but the whole second half the Bills were throwing the ball not killing the clock at all they let the Steelers get back into this game well, it's I very reminiscent of when remember when they were up big on the te- on the Texans a few years ago two years ago in the playoffs, I think in the it was. playoffs, they were up like 16 and nothing. They just had to control the clock and they okay. didn't, and they came back to bite them. It seems mm-hmm. like that problem is rearing its ugly head again for the Bills. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, good, good showing by the Steelers here, though, too. You gotta give them credit. A lot of people were writing them off. Um, us, well, some of us included me, I was writing them off. I mean, I said they weren't gonna be the same, you know, 11 and 0 team right away last year. I mean, they're, they're uh, technically they're on their way to doing they're it again. On their way, they're on their way to doing it again. Uh, but no, um, I was talking about Najee Harris a little bit. I mean, he didn't show up on the stat sheet too much. Um, but I saw a thing online that says he was out there for every single offensive snap. Ben um, missed him on a touchdown. Ben, yes, ben had him yes. in the flat on a running back wheel, and Ben missed the pass. If he hits him, it was from maybe like the six or the seven yard line. If he hits him, he walks in. But Ben missed the pass. Yeah. Um. So I mean, he didn't do too much this game but i feel like he is going to be involved a lot in this offense and i mean chase claypool made some outstanding catches and that's what they drafted that's what they drafted him to do was be the workhorse of the offense and carry as much of the load as possible to help big ben yeah yeah um i mean i i have to talk about it because i said it before with the prediction this front seven god it's so good man it is a paid tj is nice it's the front seven is absolutely like ridiculous. And the secondary looked fine. They were playing a top yeah, five they NFL competent. quarterback and they looked perfectly well, good. You can, you can disguise a lacking secondary with a good pass rush because they have to cover for a lot less downfield. And really when Mika Fitzpatrick can just kind of control the secondary and the rest of everyone else can kind of just stay by their man while TJ Watt is breathing down every quarterback's neck, you know, they don't have to cover as much and it works. Also Melvin Ingram, not going to come up in the box score. I don't think he actually registered a stat. He had like three pressures. They lined him up off ball. They lined him up middle of the line they lined him up uh outside on the other end of tj like they moved him all over the place and he was so impactful um i can't believe like the chargers just kind of let him go um for nothing for absolutely nothing i mean to just save the money but him being added to that front seven was a thing that i myself didn't even you know think enough about i was like oh he's probably doesn't really have much left it's why the Chargers got rid of him. 
he looked very, very good being like the fourth best front seven player out there. Like if Melvin Ingram is like your fourth or fifth best, you can win nine or 10 games with just your defensive front. No, it's similar to like what the Eagles did when they won on their Super Bowl run. They just had line D line depth up the wazoo and it helped a lot to win, to win games. So it was a good move for to bring him in because it's paying off and the Steelers, who knows, you know, down the stretch of the season, how many wins they'll actually come away with, but definitely a good statement win to, at least for all of us, right some wrongs and throw it in our face. Love so, it. Yep. So let's switch gears to a game that we all thought was going to be a blowout, you know, or talking offline, texting each other and whatnot. And it was a blowout, but the opposite way, which ended up screwing me in the picks as well. And that is the Pittsburgh, uh, not the Pittsburgh series, the Green Bay Packers shockingly losing 38 to three to the Jacksonville Saints. And Jameis Winston basically came out and had a career game under 200 yards passing, but that doesn't matter because he threw it into the end zone five times. So the LASIK vision, it's working. And maybe they're proving some doubters wrong in Jameis. Maybe, you know, he could be the heir apparent to Sean Payton like we all kind of thought he could be just because Sean Payton could rehab his career and it's definitely going in the right direction. And much like Aaron Rodgers, once he's out of a game, boy, does it show body language and on and off the field on the sideline as well because – Man, oh, man, he did not give a single shit once they were losing. No, no. And and it alludes back to the whole offseason of him not showing up, not wanting to sign the contract, not wanting to come back, sign an extension, whatever, the trade. It it, it just added more gas to that fire. And it, it it's erupting. I know one of my good friends is a Packers fan, and he's pissed off, too, about this. Um, But it, like you said, Justin, he just didn't care. I mean, he threw no touchdowns, two interceptions, only 130 yards, and he, he looked he looked like crap. He plain and simple looked like he crap. Checked he checked out. He, he, he looked like he didn't prepare all offseason for this game. And, I, I mean, I do feel like he's going to come around eventually within the next week or two. I really do. It's Aaron Rodgers. It's one of the greatest of all time. Um, How was your fantasy it, quarterback this week, uh, this week Clark? Um, J- Justin Fields got a couple of reps. Um, you know, he, 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 did, he did okay. Um, no, I do have Aaron Rodgers and it's disappointing, but we're not, we're not talking about fantasy. Um, but no, this offense looked bad, even in general, just like couldn't get the ball to anybody. Um, the complete opposite of what, um, the saints were running out there. The saints looked unstoppable. The Packers looked like the Jacksonville Jaguars from like last year. It it was bad. Yeah. And Alvin Kamara is continuing his trend of being just a, an elite running back in the NFL and this offense clicked really well without Michael Thomas. You know, it's kind of like we said before with the Browns where take a star player out. Do they, do they, you know, work better? Do they look better? At least with the saints right now with Michael Thomas, they didn't miss a beat and he definitely looks replaceable. Let's say. Well, I think we have to wait and see what happens when he comes back because you know, a lot of people call Michael Thomas slant boy and make fun of his, all his receptions and yards and stuff. And I, again, I go back to the point that he made, um, what else am I supposed to do when that's the only pass that Drew Brees can throw me and James when all Winston, I can catch is a five yard slant. And Winston was pushing the ball downfield with ease, you know, the arm and that's, is still and that's there. What he, yeah, that's what he did in Tampa. Um, you know, to the detriment of all the interceptions as well. With Jameis, you know he's going to push the ball. He's he's going to do what he has to do. Um, and whether that ends in a touchdown or an interception, one or the other usually. This time it happened to be five touchdowns. And I think the Packers just really didn't care. I like the, I don't I can't make any statement on the Packers based on this game because just like the Bucks game last year. Uh, in the regular season, Rodgers threw it. Honestly, no, the second pick already, he didn't care. After the first yeah. pick. It's like, like me and Matt, let's get on out of here. Yep. They were Game's down over anyway. 17, and Rodgers was like, I cannot be bothered. You know what's funny? We've seen Rodgers come back in playoff games with worse deficits. So clearly, yeah, it well, just he shows doesn't, he doesn't care about the regular season, and he's expected to make season. the playoffs. Well, if you remember the relax quote, 
you yeah. know, he, the Packers, I they kind of always tend to start slow because Rodgers kind of doesn't really care. Until well, it also doesn't – it doesn't help that really – well, it helps their case, but it doesn't help, you know, him being ready to go that – there's really no legitimate competition in the North to dethrone them. Like, yeah, the Vikings are always there, but they're a sham. The Lions are a disaster and the bears will never get out of their own way. So in reality, it's a one horse race in the North still. Yeah. They've kind of like wasted a lot of time. I Rogers too. I think like, if you look at how bad the NFC North has been um, since Rogers really took over, like there's a couple competent Vikings teams and like, a bears year here and there, but they really had like a free division for most of Rogers career, much the entirety of Rogers career. And they have one super bowl Yeah, and they've yeah. been to one super bowl. All I got to say for teams looking to be interested in Rogers next year, buyer beware at this. And this is a prime example of it. Yep. So let's get one more game in before we take a little break. And let's talk about, the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Minnesota Vikings, who we were just talking about. And Joe Burrow, in his return, leading his team to an overtime win, 27-24. And him and Jamar Chase, the pick looks to be panning out because the college boys had a game. Yeah. College boys. <laughs> college <laughs> boy. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm back on the Burrow train, baby. I was on it last year where some of you guys on this podcast um, were – um, crapping no, on me. Burrow's a good court. I was just, I just wanted to see him play. That's all. Yeah. And you saw him play. No, and he's a the record, six. Clark. Me and you were on the Burrow. We train. were on the Burrow Justin train. It was and him Joe, were and Joe, who hasn't showed up or texted in the chat in weeks. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if he, he he's he's alive. I guess, I guess Joe's he's alive MIA. somewhere. He's at my A right now. Hasn't texted in our podcast chat. If you're wondering why you haven't seen him. Um, but anyways, he wasn't on the Joe Burrow train. And like Jesse said, we were. And he proved with a healthy Joe Burrow, a, 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 a slight upgrade at O-line from last year. Not much He's, better. Not much better, but. Hey, and Joe Mixon a being better. a lead back now, not having to split reps, he is back to being a pretty good running back. Pretty solid. The yeah. year I don't take him in fantasy. Yeah, of course. Didn't you go <laughs> against him this week too? Yeah, I'm so, I won though this week. Yeah, unless Tucker shanks like three field goals. Oof. Mm. So, nice. But no, well. Joe Burrow, at the uh, also with the batting goals, they looked. Decent, you know, they're uh, the offense isn't the problem. It's going to be their defense, but the defense came through when it mattered and just got in the head of Kirk Cousins, who, when it comes down to crunch time and he needs to step up and make a play, he can't. And I don't think he'll ever be able to until he proves. Hey, hey, he got him to overtime. Yeah, if but doubt, he didn't do if doubt. Well, okay, okay. Well, I don't like Kirk Cousins. We all know that. No one likes. Kirk I don't like Kirk Cousins. Cousins. Kirk Cousins did enough to win them this game because it was against the Bengals. Like if this was like the chiefs or anything, obviously he's not going to come back. Kirk cousins had them in position to win this game barely, but they were going to, and then Dalvin cook fumbled. That's kind of the takeaway I have yeah, here. Pretty much Bengals Bengals played fine. Vikings probably aren't as good as I thought they were going to be. Maybe they'll work it out. Honestly, like they have so much talent but I definitely, uh, really Mike Zimmer's butt's getting a little warm though, because he's. I, it's, it's gonna. It's so the, sad because I think Zimmer's a really good coach. I just think it's. I think that it's, his wagon got put on Kirk Cousins, which he didn't choose. No, he did not choose. You know, that. if Teddy Bridgewater's knee doesn't crumble beneath him in practice, you know, we could be looking at a completely different Vikings team. Which yeah, we'll no, talk about Teddy Bridgewater probably, when we get there. Yeah, but I mean, the Vikings. <sighs> What do you like? What do it's you want to be say? Another, it's going to be another mediocre year. Sometimes looks really good. It's like, oh wow, how are you going to like stop these guys? Like, oh man, Kirk Cousins has so many weapons. It doesn't even matter if he's mid. He just has to get them the ball. But then, like, there's just there's so many drives where it's three and out or six and out, and they just the look gonna, bad. The issue is it's going to ride and die with how well Kirk Cousins plays. And since he is so sporadically good and never really overly consistent, that's all the team will be. And that's what showed now, basically, where they were, like you said, they were good enough to get into overtime, but they're, they can't put it away. That's them all the time. They're good enough to win the one o'clock games most times, but they're not good enough to win prime time when it matters. And this is just kind of a microcosm of the entire Viking seasons that we've seen under the entirety of the Kirk Cousins era. I mean, that Kirk Cousins yeah. era. 
Yep, I agree. I did not know this game. So with that, let's take a short little break. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the rest of the remaining games from week one. Stay tuned. And we're back for the second half of week one recap. So let's just pick up where we left off with the Cardinals and the Titans. Shockingly, the Cardinals came away and blew out the Titans 38 to 13. And boy, oh boy, the air raid offense is looking good. And the Titans, they started out slow, which, you know, maybe that's a good or a bad thing. But leaving the Texans basically first in the South, but hopefully not for too much longer, but who knows? But what do you guys think about this game? I know, I know Jesse had some thoughts about the whole offense coordinator and stuff, so I'll let him carry the load on this one. Um, I knew that the Titans were going to start slow. I said this in the offseason uh, prediction thing uh, when we broke down the divisions. They are working in a all-new offensive coordinator um, because Arthur Smith left to the Falcons. Uh, Ryan Tannehill now has to kind of take more responsibility. Um, they need to kind of figure out a whole new offense. Also, while incorporating in Julio Jones. And then you add in the fact that their line has probably gotten worse just over the years. Uh, and that attributes into, you know, the Chandler Jones five sacks that he had uh, three in the first quarter. Um I mean, the takeaway here, the Titans couldn't get Derrick Henry going, and that's it. You don't they get Derrick get the... Henry going, that's it. That's and with it. Chandler Jones breathing down Tannehill's neck, they couldn't get the off the air game going either. You know, Julio I, Jones, I, I don't AJ think Brown get, didn't do much. I don't think you get the air game going without Derrick Henry anyway because Tannehill needs the play-action passes because he needs those extra seconds to breathe because the line isn't great pass blockers. So as the... good as Saffold and Luan are at run blocking, they're not great pass blockers. So is this slightly exposing Tannehill a little bit if they I can't run the ball? I think it's just showing the weaknesses of the Titans offense as a whole that to beat them is, you know, take care of their weakened offensive line and hit Tannehill and you basically shut down the offense. There you go. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side of things, DeAndre Hopkins showed why he's still a top three receiver in the NFL and Kyler Murray, you know, looking at this game really has no excuses now for the rest of the season. Cause he set the bar really well of what the offense can do. Um, yeah. Good for the Cardinals defense. I mean, like that's, that's my big takeaway. Um, they stopped Derrick Henry from ever getting going. That's a pretty big deal. Not many, uh, not many teams can do that. Yeah. I will say it's, it's going to become easier. The Titans always do this. They get a second half season surge because Teams are tired of tackling big running backs and Henry is just going to gash you when you don't want to wrap your arms around him and bring him to the ground. Um, so they're going to have to work through and find their victories until around week eight or week nine, then they'll probably get better. Um, I still think they'll probably win the division, but am I too surprised? Not really. Uh, good job for the Cardinals, though. Good yeah, and quickly, we talked about the NFC West, and every team won in that division, so it, it, it's going to be tough. It's yep, gonna be it's going to be a hell of a divisional fight to see which of those teams come out. So let's keep it with another the bad division and the AFC South, where we had a, a matchup, to say the least, between the, ten, the Texans and the Jaguars in Trevor Lawrence's debut. Urban Meyer went out and said, buddy, go throw as many times as you have ever thrown in Cle your Clemson career. Cause he had him drop back like 40 plus times. It felt like 50. three touchdowns yeah. Yeah, a lot. He threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns to three interceptions, but ultimately Tyrod Taylor and David Culley were able to sneak out a win 37 to 21 over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Urban Meyer, whew, not, in, not a good debut in the NFL. Yeah. I don't blame this on Trevor Lawrence at all. I mean, he he doesn't call the plays. He doesn't make up the plays. You got a great running back, second year running back in James Robinson there, who was a stud last year. He only had five carries. Like, wait, like wait, wait, wait! Did you say James Robinson? I think you mean Carlos Hyde. Oh yeah, he had majority of the carries. Because that's nine carries, my man. I said yeah. it. 
I said it. I said it to both of you. When ETN got himself injured, I said, this is exactly what Urban Meyer wants. Because at the end of the season, do you know who is going to lead them in carries? Ohio State former running back Carlos Ide. I said it. Well, I have both in fantasy. So that's going to be fun. Which one I start each week. Um, but no, I blame this loss a hundred percent on Urban Meyer. Um, I, I mean, this the was defense Trevor, looked horrible. Defense looked bad. You're right. They they gave up 37 points to the Texans. Um, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, in the first half. I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was Trevor Lawrence's first loss in a regular season ever. ever. High ever. school, college, and now. What do you think about Pop Warner? Now he lost a couple because you, you you know you 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 have, you have like the, the kids that my, the parents that push their kids like the little fat kids that are you know playing video <laughs> games all day the parents signed them up and that was probably kids walking for him so he probably lost a couple games there, um, but no I blame this on Urban Meyer I want to see more of Trevor Lawrence I would say I want to see more of Trevor Lawrence against a bad defense but he went up against a pretty bad defense in the Houston Texans that is so. probably the worst defense in the NFL yeah so I don't have faith in this Jaguars team at all with Urban at the helm and with the Jaguars defense and it, 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 it's, it's a mess it's gonna be a mess for his first year I hate to see it with Trevor Lawrence of how talented he is but it's gonna be a mess his first year saw a tweet where someone said uh, Urban Meyer's gonna have a health condition by week six just to <laughs> yeah. get out just of that contract but, uh, Jesse, any any quick thoughts on this game? Because, boy, oh, boy, was it a mess for the Jaguars. Yeah, I mean, the Jags, the Jags look bad. Uh, every, they literally don't look like they have a good group anywhere besides receiver. Um, Marvin Jones I mean, like, is good. Yeah, Marvin Jones, Shark, uh, LaVisca Chanel, they're good. Like, they're, they're all good. That, that is a legit three-man group. You don't need yeah. any other receivers. Don't please don't draft another receiver, Jacksonville. You need <laughs> get a tight so end. many other things. Get a tight end. Get a different. Well, they tackle. had one and cut him. Get, but... get a def- Tim Tebow. Get a defense. Um, yeah, I mean, you're asking a quarterback to go out in his first NFL game and throw 51 times, and he threw three picks. I mean, come on. What what, what did you want what him you to do? Yeah. Um, the Texans pretty much don't like have a pass rush as far as I was concerned. Um, and yet they like still got a, a decent amount of pressure on Lawrence. It felt like he was running a lot. Um, Jacksonville has like two, maybe three legit players on their defense. Um, I didn't say on their team. No, my, like Miles Jack, Josh Allen, Shaq Griffin. That's about it. CJ Henderson and like get rid of the rest. Like they're – they are a long ways away is what this game showed, basically. And will Urban Meyer yeah. stick it out through the whole rebuild? I don't think so. So we'll have to see. But let's talk about another team that has a long, long rebuild ahead of them, but not as long as we thought. And that is the San Francisco 49ers basically being able to hold off the Lions 41 to 33. And the main thing this showed is Dan Campbell is a rah-rah enough guy to get his team to play con- competitive football. You know, we saw the debut of Trey Lance come in, throw a touch and pass, and get the hell out of there and basically give the reins back over to Jimmy G. But they never rolled over and died as we thought. And Jared Goff, you know, I still think his career is going to take a horrible turn in Detroit, but I don't think it's as dead on arrival as everyone initially thought because he kept him in the game. Yeah, yeah, he kept him in the game, and their number one receiver is like Quintez Cephas or maybe Khalif Raymond or – those are just names. I don't know. Who's the other guy? Those, those Amari, like creative player Amari names. St. Brown. Those aren't real uh, people. <laughs> I mean, like, his number one receiving target is TJ Hawkinson, who is a great tight end, but, you know, like, that's that's his number one. Um, the line played good enough. Sewell looked Lions. well at left tackle. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. they, looked, they looked good. DeAndre Swift looked good. Um, I don't want to look too much of this into the Lions. The 49ers took the, the – uh, foot pedal. off the gas yeah foot off the gas uh and yeah they got back in on like an onsides kick and then they scored and it was like kind of cute but we all knew they weren't gonna like actually win and of course um, they were gonna be the guinea pig to be the first team to go up against what shanahan's concocting with a two quarterback scheme with lance and garoppolo yeah um, and i mean the 49ers looked really good moster gets hurt immediately doesn't matter they don't play trey sermon don't play Trey Sermon. Uh, Earl Mitchell, who I don't know who he is, like had a 100-yard rush game or something. Hey, and at least DeAndre Swift uh, showed that 
he's at least halfway decent for the yeah, line. He's not Sharon Carey with Adrian Peterson. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, Williams Williams was a great get for them, though. I think the balance of Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift is really, really nice. Um, Hawkinson's good. The offensive line is good. They will pr- the, One of those receivers, I think, is going to pan out. I think it'll be Amari St. Brown. Maybe Cephas is like a number four, um, but they probably need to get like a number one receiver in this year's draft. It was definitely a good moral victory for them where they at least played tough and maybe they give something worth watching. I respect it. Look, it's it's not Matt Patricia. Like that's no, it's really it. They looked like like a team just who's at least healthy. They know what direction they're going in and the players want to be there and they're not depressed. Yeah, and it's not just like this weird thing where this guy with the Patriots is like trying to instill this thing where he gets rid of the good players and like makes no names good, but they're also not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the king of making no names good. Bill Belichick and the Patriots barely, just barely losing to the Miami Dolphins, one of the few times a Disciple of Belichick comes back and wins in Miami. Dolphins won 17 to 16. Tua, he played all right. Mac Jones definitely played better out of the two quarterbacks, but it definitely seems like the Patriots, they have what they want, which is Tom Brady light in Mac Jones. Yeah. Um, good showing from Mac. Very, very good showing. Um, like you said, I'm still not sold on Tua all the way. I have to still see more from this year. Um, but no, Patri- Patriots put up a fight. It was a very back and forth game. Um, the two middle teams of this division, I would say, um, you know, Aguilar is proving to be the wide receiver one there. Um, I, I, I was, I was impressed a little bit with the Patriots, but, um, Dolphins too. I mean, they, they seem to have a lot of work to do. I feel it, it's way too early to like, and not, um, analyze this game. A lot of work to be done on both of these teams. Um, do I think the Dolphins are going to be better than the Patriots? Probably. Um, but no, it, it, it was a, a lot of work to be done. With this I think game. this showed, though, what a lot of Patriot games are going to look like this year, which are going to be slower paced, drag them out, yeah. defensive games. You know, they'll score under 20. They'll try to keep you under around 20 and see if they can eke out the win. Because I still think they're a few explosive playmakers away on both sides of the ball to really take off. But you're starting to see the foundation foundation for their next team when they are ready to compete being laid now. And I think that's what this was. Yeah, I think both of these teams um, are still going to be like pretty good. Um, it was kind of weird watching them. It felt like watching the same team just like play themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think Flores has like captured the Belichick essence as as it's what patricia wanted to do was supposed to be yeah um i think he's like captured it the most like these teams played like so similar um but the dolphins at the end of the day i think just felt more talented um they had better receivers i think that's going to be the main thing where new england is going to fall short this year they got better at receiver they're still not good at receiver like they're okay They'll, they'll be fine. Nelson Aguilar is good. He's probably better as a number two. Um, Myers is like, okay, there are going to be a run first offense. They're going to grind out games. They're going to win games. I think they're still going to win double digits because um, I think the formula works. We've seen this formula with Brady. Um, if Mac Jones can be a young Brady, which I remind you, young Brady was not special. Young Brady was just okay. He was a game manager. If that's what Mac Jones does, they're going to win. They're going to win games. So let's talk about a team that we thought would be able to win games just by taking care of the football and grinding out with their defense. Like we alluded to before, and that's the Washington football team who I thought was going to win this game and not take it to the chargers, but at least stay competitive and very, very early on in the game. One of their first offensive possessions, their quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, goes out with a hip injury, and he's out for some significant time, as he did get IR today. And Justin Herbert came out and led the way for a win. <coughs> it is the start of the MVP run for Justin Herbert. Um, no, uh, good win from the Chargers. It was, a, it was another tough game, similar to the last one. Came down to the wire with this one, too. Um, 
you know, they just kneel it at the end, whatever. But um, no, Herbert looked great, you know, 330 yards, touchdown interception. Um, Eckler didn't look too bad at he all. Played. Either. That's all that matters. He that played. you know, no, but I'm just saying where you know, he or late in the week he got a hamstring injury, he didn't really practice yeah. too much. Everyone thought he was going to be hurt again and this is where we go mainly because of course he's my number one pick but unlike Clark's team my players when they get hurt they actually play and score so yeah mine just go away I had two on IR right now you dodged a bullet with Jerry Judy long term at least but yeah you know he played he was productive but he wasn't the main focus of the offense which of course is going to be Justin Herbert and he's taking the next step we thought he would and he's looking good doing it yeah, Herbert also had two touchdowns dropped. Um, <sighs> Herbert might be like a top five quarterback by the end of the year. I agree. I he, agree. he might be a top five quarterback by like week eight. <laughs> I, he might be a top five quarterback right now. Oh, God, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Herbert's really good. Like that's that's kind of my takeaway. This feels like a game. You know Herbert is a culture changer when any other year the Chargers lose this game. Like yes. they're so historically the chargers are so bad at like giving games away. And this was a game that was right there for the taking well, for Washington and, that's when and the you, chargers got it. Well, that's when, you know, you have a quarterback who's going to be not just a good quarterback, but going to take the step to be elite, be great is when their presence on the field makes everyone around them better. Look at Mahomes. look at Brady, you know, Rogers to an extent when he was, gave a shit so at least now we're starting to see that's what herbert is doing because a lot of these players were there when phil was there and they weren't as good he's there and he's taking them to the next level yeah they're um they're probably at that uh at that next level too because washington punts them the ball back with like six minutes seven minutes left in the fourth and they don't touch the ball again. Like that's insane. Also, on the last drive, let's let's just listen to this. First and ten, they get second and six. Penalty, second and sixteen, incomplete. Five minutes and twenty nine seconds left. Herbert has a third and sixteen on the Chargers' own twelve. He hits a seventeen yarder to Keenan Allen to get the first. They get to third and three again, get another first. Get to third and seven, get another first. Go to third and four, get another first. He made every single play. Big that time he players make big to. time plays. And I mean, that's what he's like doing. Seven minutes left, three timeouts, and Washington still could not get the ball back to even try to go on the game winning drive. It's absurd. Yeah, I'm, we could be seeing the beginning of something great for Justin Herbert. We saw it last oh God, season where he's, he's picking so up good. where he left off. And, you know, Clark's calling the MVP season. You know, calling he's it. definitely setting calling the tone it. for that. So let's talk about a quarterback who had high hopes in his original team with the New York Jets and Sam Darnold. And he had the revenge game after being sent to Carolina, <laughs> taking on his replacement and looking good doing it because – Whenever you have talent around you, you can step up and actually be a good football player. He's reunited with Robbie Anderson. He gets help of, with Christian McCaffrey, a halfway decent offensive line, better than what he ever had in New York. And he shoves it back in the Jets' face, having one of his best passing games of his career, if not his best passing game of his career, right in front of them, in front of their new Golden Boy quarterback, Zach Wilson, who didn't play horrible, didn't play great, but obviously Mekhi Becton went down, so... The Jets offensive line is instantly weakened again, but ultimately the Panthers walk away with the W. Oh my god, it's thunder outside. But now it's insane. But um yeah, I guess it's the Michigan storm rolling in. Um, it must be all the way from the West getting, Coast. Getting plenty of fresh water all 12 hours away. <laughs> um, but now um I've said this about Darnold. Get him out of New York, put him anywhere with good receivers around him, one of the best, if not the best running backs behind him, and he'll thrive. And Sam Darnold had a great game. Um, I thought he did. I loved the touchdown to Robbie. I thought that was fantastic. He that they actually jet, got a touchdown in the game. Jet taunt uh, Anderson oh, did. I, yeah, yeah. I thought that was great. Um, McCaffrey led they both in rushing and receiving, so he's obviously going to be a big factor here too. Um, they, they looked fine. I, I don't think they're going to be the best team though overall as they play tougher teams. I don't think. Um, this is going to keep up because they did kind of almost get shut out in the second half. They only got a field goal 
Meanwhile, they put up 16 in the first half. So um, I, I don't think they're the best team. But um, on the flip side, Zach, Zach Wilson wasn't half bad. He showed no, some he, flashes of I mean, greatness. He was, he was under pressure. He got hit eight times already, which boy, he's going to get used to that. That was oof, awfully quick. Um, no, but he made a few nice plays, got a touchdown pass. He took care of the ball, didn't make any typical rookie bonehead throws, you know, that I can think of of note. So he at least went out there, didn't have the greatest debut, didn't have the worst debut. He had a solid debut, what you would expect for anyone to be the quarterback of the Jets to go out there and look like. Yeah, Corey Davis looked like a number one receiver too, like five catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns. So that's good. Looks like they at least have a receiver for him to throw to. It's more than Darnold had. Um, well, they, he had one, but then they let him walk to Carolina. Let him walk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, Carolina is a better team than the Jets. I don't think that's a groundbreaking statement. <laughs> they're, they're just better. That's what they were supposed to do. I would have loved if they continued to shut them out the way they were in the first half. They seemed like they just, you know, kind of stopped caring and assumed they were just going to walk away with the win. Um, McCaffrey's really good. I think we kind of, you know, whenever a player gets injured, and they're kind of hurt for the year and kind of you can't really see them. You kind are. of for yeah, you kind of forget how good they like actually are. And McCaffrey is the Panthers' best receiver and <laughs> running back. Like it's He's insane. Best player. He's the best offensive weapon in football because how yeah. well he can do both. Him and him and Kamara, yeah, they're they're up there. Um yeah, I mean, like at the end of the day, the Panthers are just better than the Jets. I think the Jets will get better as the year goes on. The more reps they get together, um, Zach Wilson looked fine. For a I while. mean, like he looks, he looks like what he was. Hopefully, Becton's injury isn't serious. I don't know if they. I saw it was a, it. it was one of the like LCLs, MCLs, ACLs. One of those. It was a sprain, and it's four to five weeks. It's probably because he came in so out of shape. Yeah, but uh, Toby. Let's we seen that him. happen. We seen that happen to Harden in Brooklyn when he messed up his hamstring. Back. He was he was completely out of shape because he wanted Houston to trade him. So true, Becton true. comes back completely, back. you know, out of shape. He's probably going to pull something. So let's talk about a team who went out there and laid an egg. You know, Jesse's golden boy, <laughs> Arthur Smith. The next Kyle Shanahan. The Knicks show. I nev- never said the offensive any of this. guru. Never said any of this. Said he was a Titans. really said he was a really good offensive coordinator. So Justin's like Jesse has an Arthur Smith jersey made oh, his, for him. His custom. Falcons went out and laid an egg to Ooh, the yeah, they Eagles, where Jalen Hurts he started to prove the haters, the doubters wrong. You know, he took control of the game and led the way for the Eagles to win. And who I quote said, Nick Sirianni is an idiot of head coach, much like Mike Vrabel went out and threw that in my face and got the first win of their career. Yeah. I mean, when you say the haters on Jalen Hurts, are you talking about the Eagles organization? Hmm. Because like nobody seems to hate Jalen Hurts more than, more than the Eagles themselves. We're everybody's kind of like in agreement. Like, yeah, let's see what Hurts does. He's an interesting prospect. Yeah. We, want, we want to see him. And the Eagles are like, absolutely not. We hate this guy. He's we don't be, want him to be on our He's going to be auditioning for the quarterback job all season, basically. Yeah. Even though he like played fantastic. Um, Joe Flacco and who else? Oh, Garner Minshew behind him. Yeah, Garner Minshew's back there. Um, no, I mean, my big takeaways, the Falcons looked absolutely terrible. Yeah. That line got ran over by the Eagles front seven, which is, again, a really good front seven. Good, if they old. can stay healthy, if they can stay healthy for the whole year, like that's a really good front seven. Just nobody kind of expects them to stay healthy that long. Uh, Devontae Smith looks really good. That's I got, that's good for the Eagles. They probably finally hit on a first round draft pick. I'm happy for them. Um, I don't I don't want to read too much into this. Neither I don't want to say I don't want to be like, look, the Falcons suck. The Eagles are good. I think this is just a week one game. I think the Falcons are probably you know they're gonna look better than this next week against Tampa somehow. Like they're gonna go from playing Philly terribly to probably playing Tampa close because um, that's the NFL. But my biggest, the one thing that I can take away that I think is going to linger all year is that Falcons line is not good. It's, it's really not good. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I agree with you, Jesse. I don't want to look into this more too, but because they're kind of two mid teams right here and you got to see what they do against worse teams and better teams. So 
Yeah, I'm with you on that one. So let's talk about some worse teams, some better teams, and that <laughs> is the Seattle Seahawks and the Indianapolis Colts, where I thought at least, you know, the Colts were still going to lose, which they did, but I thought it would be at least closer and a little more of a better game, if we're being honest. But early on, it was clear the defense was coming out flat and the offensive line is a mess without a single left tackle. And Carson Wentz, when he had time to throw, he could make all the throws. He shows that he can still move coming off of the foot injury. But at the end of the day, Russell Wilson with DK Metcalf, Chris Carson, and Tyler Lockett is still one of the best offenses in football. And they let Russ cook for four touchdown passes. And he garbage cooked the Colts. What? Russ cooked. He did. No, Russ he cooked, cooked all right. He cooked up the Colts defense and he just split all the coverage, bombing it downfield. And the Colts defense later on in the second half actually showed up. But as a whole, the offensive line, which has been a strong suit for the Colts and the defense came out flat and set the tone and really set them behind the eight ball. Yeah. Said it best. I mean, it's hard to stop Russ. Russ is so good. Um, and he he just dominated. He's dominated the weak point, which is our secondary. And, you know, can't blame them for going deep all those times. And Lockett looked really, really good. DK was, um, you know, a, a little quiet, but not too bad. He still had a touchdown. Um, no, Carson looked great. Um, offense looked really, really good. And on the flip side of the ball, Carson looked fine as well. Uh, Carson looked, he had a couple of QB hits and a couple sacked a couple of times. He got um, rushed a few times. Yeah. Yeah. But um, didn't make any stupid throws, which was great. Scr- scrambled a couple of times, which was great. Um, need to see more out of the running backs. You know, Jonathan Taylor was a stud last year. Didn't really put up too much. Um, but now, um, you know, a lot of work to be done with the Colts and the Seahawks look great, great as always, I think. Yeah, I mean, the Seahawks are always going to play at their best, I think, week one. Um, They're historically a very good week one team, especially when Carroll has that much time to prepare. Um, I kind of feel similar to this as I did with the Panthers and the Jets game. I I just feel like the Seahawks are just a better team. No, absolutely I mean, they are. Um, better coach, I think better Ross, build, better quarterback, better. Here's, here's the, the problem. The line with, was the biggest shocker for me. For Seattle's that they actually have a pretty good a pass pretty, rush now. Well, that's the thing. They're always going to find like these pass rushers here and there, and they're always going to develop pass rush in, in even a schemed way. But the big takeaway here, I think, was when the Colts like want to be like legit contenders, they're going to have to upgrade the defense and the defensive scheme because cover two works really well. Cover two man works really well when you're going up against, you know, okay quarterbacks to bad quarterbacks, young quarterbacks, things like that. But once you get to the contending teams, cover two man doesn't usually cut it. And that's why we seen in the second half them play better. They went away from the cover two man. But when you go in week in week out and your scheme is going to be covered to man no matter what quarterback you're going against you might need to tweak it a little bit because you've seen look at where all russ's touchdowns were down Fades, the middle. middle of the field de- deep down the middle he kept hitting it over and over again and good on the colts for adjusting to that but you have to adjust to that probably in practice before you play like no russell wilson hitting deep middle fade routes shouldn't be surprising to anybody. And one last what he's note, made a career on. One last note for me with the Colts is, can we move away from running the ball on first and second down? On first down, we get two yards. Second down, you get one yard, and you have to throw on third and seven, and third you just throw seven, a, yeah. a screen pass. Can we move away from that and actually open I, up the playbook? Because like we said, you know, Wentz can throw, and for not having a preseason and limited practice, the timing with his receivers, it was there. Like, they were on the same page, and you didn't see as many disconnects as you thought you would. So clearly the passing game, you know, on paper-wise, through just repetition and pre- game planning, they're on the same page. So let him throw the ball, and move, they're too, they're almost too committed to the running game. Yeah, the run game wasn't working, and – I also think my, my one critique of Wentz is, yes, the offensive line didn't play great, but some of those hits and sacks are on him. He yes. did this in Philly as well. He held the ball he, too long. He holds the ball too long looking for the big, deep play instead of the check down. Mm-hmm. And you don't need that from your quarterback. I can relate. All the time. That's what that makes – that, yeah, that's the difference. That's also the difference between, you know, Mahomes and Herbert. and They those get the guys. ball out fast they, and they know where they're going. 
Yeah, and when they're looking for the deep play, it's not the only thing they're focused on. When Wentz locks in on that big play, it seems like that's the only thing he wants to do. So he just needs to get out of that. Um, I also think the Colts are one more receiver away. I think you guys need Pascal looked good. Pittman looked good. T.Y. is washed. Well, he didn't play because he's hurt, but I know, but I'm saying no, you know. don't have, you don't have well, a third receiver. The Mike hope is it's either strong like, or Campbell where Campbell, if he can stay on the field, he is basically very similar build speed and strength wise to what T Y Hilton was when he first came up, which is a smaller speedy receiver. And we saw him make a play. He can, he, he can catch the ball and run routes. It's just, can he stay on the field? And yeah. strong is clearly wide receiver four. I'd like to see him get worked in more since he is a massive human being at like six, five. Yeah. yeah. Well, I also felt like Wentz didn't necessarily have a check down and a safety valve in no. this game. So he's going to need, he's going to need to develop that with somebody. That's where I think I mean, where like they need another receiver. Yes. No, they I agree. need a guy that he's like going to have with. that with. Yeah. <laughs> So we got two more games left, so let's just knock them out real quick before we wrap up this podcast. Broncos went into New Jersey, took out the Giants 27 to 13. The Teddy the Teddy Bridgewater resurgence bandwagon is alive in Hell well yeah. in Denver in the Mile High City. He looked well. He was getting the ball to Jerry Judy before he got carted off the field, but only sprained his ankle somehow where that looked like it was a bad, bad That injury. looks like an ACL. It did. It did. It, yeah, and oh, Clark, you gotta stop drafting at this point. Bro, I, I, I had such bad two luck. Years. I, exactly two years. I had two such years bad too luck many. This first week. Oh my but god! But the biggest question was answered. Teddy Bridgewater still has it to be a good quarterback in the NFL. Will he get them to the Super Bowl? No, no not saying that. But will he make them at least respectable and flirt with a wild card berth? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. I'm gonna do the dumb things that Locke does. Like that, that's what you know. Yeah, no, it was great. You know, we talked about this team a lot in the offseason. Great defense, um, good good offensive weapons, even with Judy being down. I mean, Tim Patrick's still fine. Hamler's good. Melvin Gordon put up a pretty a very, very good game. And Saved no my ass in fantasy. There you go. And no offense, a great tight end. So they have all the weapons there. O-line is solid. Defense is phenomenal. And, and, the, and on the flip side, Giants what stunk. This, yeah, and what this did for me with Bridgewater was it showed still – Cape more than capable of being an NFL quarterback, and he does the job. He's getting the ball to his his playmakers and taking care of the football when he can't. It's as simple as that. And they'll win some they'll win some ball games this year. But on the flip side, like you're saying, Daniel Jones can't take care of the football. Offensive line, future defense, really bad. The Giants, they are a mess. They are worse than I anticipated, honestly, because at least I thought Daniel Jones will at least get somewhat of his act together. And right out the gate. Fumbling the football, not really doing much. The offense fell flat. Saquon Barkley off the injury, not doing much. Good areas tuning, negative one yards, basically. The Giants are bad. I think this I, is this is it. Yeah. I want to give the Giants the benefit of the doubt because the Broncos are a really good defense. Like, I really want to. I want to be like, ah, maybe, you know, they'll be better. But I really don't think they are. I've never bought into the Daniel Jones thing right. like he look he looks like a quarterback i guess no, like he, he looks shows like if he, flashes where he can yeah. make the plays he can run the football when he has to he can make the throws downfield but on the broadcast they brought up a stat 40 turnovers in 28 career games that i, is I said it i said it on the um the preview on pod the, on, on the preview pod when daniel jones gets grabbed by a defensive lineman he does not know he doesn't know how to actually hang on to the ball. And we've seen that again. And guess what, Daniel Jones? That's not going to stop happening because your line sucks. Yeah, Andrew Thomas, who was supposed to be the safest pick, looking out to be the Worst biggest one. out of all the tackles, which is amazing. And I have really nothing else to say. Did you guys see, I don't know, the video real quick of – uh, Nate Solder got turned around. He was blocking by Von Miller. I think he, he was, was blocking, blocking Devonte Booker. Yeah, he was blocking Devonte Booker. That's the Giants Booker. in Von a Miller nutshell. Didn't do a spin move. Didn't do any move. He nope. just ran straight past him. Yep. Giants offensive Von line. Von Miller ruptured his Achilles. Giants offensive line will be one of the points that kills them this season. So real quick, finally before we wrap up this podcast, Rams went out and thrashed the Bears, thirty-four to fourteen. We saw a Justin Field sighting. Boy, they need to start him more. Matt Stafford looks good, happy, and healthy in L.A., where he belongs, and he will thrive. That's all I got for this game. Happily married, too. <laughs> to two yeah. women. 
Yeah, they showed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they showed the, the wrong woman on TV. Um, Stafford see, with the um, shooter sleeves. Staff- it's different. Do you see yeah, Stafford's awesome. actual wife went out and posted a picture with the woman that? That's hilarious. They that's missed. Great. That's showed. good. But yeah, Stafford with the short shooting sleeve, different. It's like hoodie. Yeah, Mellon. yeah, he's LA baby. Like he doesn't look like a bum anymore in the silver and blue. He looks like the a fact star that he now. was running to the sideline and celebrating with McVay just shows how bought into the culture he is and how much more fun he's actually having which i think is the first time in his like 12 year career where he's actually having fun playing football again since college which um, they're set up but at the same time their division is going to be a tough one yeah um just just one thing i want to say um because i've noticed a lot of this like revisionist history going around now because like stafford's now getting pushed back because he's in la and stuff but when you make the argument that Oh, Stafford had Calvin Johnson. He obviously had help. No, stop. Shut up. You didn't watch any of the games clearly. He had no running game. He had no defense. He had no offensive line. It was just him, Calvin. Oh, my God. Like, it's so infuriating to see that because it's like, how dumb are you? That defense was so bad. Coaches, the best coach they ever had was Jim Caldwell, who was specialized in going nine and seven. (laughs) Like they wasted a top ten pick on Eric Ebron. Like they and then went out so... and drafted another first round tight end. They drafted two first round tight ends in his <sighs> tenure there. There was well, Hawkinson's at least good, but like yeah. there was so there was so much wrong with the organization. And now all of a sudden, people are coming out of the woodwork, being like, "Well, wait a minute, maybe Detroit wasn't so now, bad." Now no, he's on a team where were. he has. Now he has a team where three receivers could be number ones on most teams in the NFL. Legitimate tight ends, two of the best defensive players in all of football. So, and a team with bottomless resources, it seems, with draft picks and salary cap. So he's set up to succeed. And with that, that wraps up the week one recap podcast. We'll be back later in the week for the week two picks, which we'll actually try to do. And I'm off to Indianapolis to see the Colts get their ass kicked by the Rams. So I'll be reporting back how that goes. So Clark, where can everyone listen to the podcast when they come out? Yeah, y'all know the drill. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, listen on there. Follow us on our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Sports Dev Pod. That's Sports D-E-P-T Pod. Um, we're, we're back in the football season. So predictions breakdowns of that um wwe draft got announced so we're bringing back our draft oh podcast. yeah justin can't, oh, yeah. Can't, justin can't get kicked around this time because i'm drafting this time and justin will be commissioning i Jesse think I, I fuck up being a commissioner oh <laughs> w- the the WWE talent pulls a lot less good than it was last time clark oh i'm yeah. not gonna be able to get daniel bryan in the third round no no it, it, it's, it's gonna be fun so stay tuned for that um, baseball players are coming up seasons wrapping up soon so yeah we'll talk about baseball that's a thing yeah postseason podcast Oof. will be and coming some nba pods starting soon some previews jesse oh, i can't wait i hope <laughs> yeah. um, oh man with steve's work schedule yeah yeah Oof, you might be doing with us which oh boy so they're not getting done no <laughs> um so stay tuned for all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the next episode